Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. It's time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 420. It is all about the guys today. <laughs> well, maybe a maybe a few girls. <laughs> But I have the next collection of Simply Defined for you, and it is definitely dude inspired. <laughs> I also have some product that I knew nothing about until it landed on my desk from Stampendous. It is part of their Dreamweaver line, and it is a gone when gone product and it was on my desk and I played with it and I'm like well why didn't I know about this before but I guess better late than never right especially since we are able to bring it to you for such an amazing price this week it's just it just worked so well with this new Simply Defined collection. It really did. I've got products from, I'm going to play with some stuff from Hunky Dory and there's some Memento on my desk and some alcohol markers. So I hope you enjoy this full length commercial free technique based class. And if you do, I would ask that you subscribe to us. There's a little heart over here with an SMS in it. Just Put your mouse over the top of it and a subscribe bar will come up and you just click that subscribe bar and that way you always will know when the next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class is premiering. We are live chatting during the premiere so if you're over here watching the live chat, hi everybody. <laughs> it's good to see you. It really is good to see you. So I don't have winner winner chicken dinner today and I will announce all four winners next week. The winners from last week and then the winners from this week. And I think most of you know the reason why I don't have them. After the live chat last Saturday, uh, very shortly after we were on a plane to Wisconsin, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, we received an urgent phone call that our nephew had been injured in a horrific industrial accident. And we were on the first plane out to get to, uh, to, get to his family. So we flew to Eau Claire, well, we flew into Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then drove to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which was absolutely stunning. Oh, it made me want to move. It was just the most beautiful place. It had this combination of this hometown filled with these beautiful older homes that had character and front porches and yards and green space and the trees were turning color and the leaves were beginning to fall and there were lakes and ponds everywhere so you had this charming town of Eau Claire but if you drove just a mile or two in any direction from where we were staying there were all of the wonderful amenities that a city has and it was just it was sad that we were visiting such a beautiful place in our country under such horrible circumstances. So if you follow me on Facebook, then you know that we were there when, um, then when it was time to say goodbye to our nephew, we were in the hospital room and uh, with, he was surrounded by family and friends and lots of love and uh, they, they made the decision to let him go and the we're I mean it was just he he hadn't moved since we had been there he hadn't moved at all and when they finally took everything off and and made him comfortable he he turned his face up he lifted his moved his head up and he smiled and then he was gone so for that how can you be anything but blessed to know that the last thing the first thing he saw on his way to heaven made him smile now many of you um, posted on Facebook and you read my posts and I can't thank you enough for all of the love and the support that you have given us it was not just for me truly it wasn't Social media has, everything has a ripple effect. You throw a pebble into the ocean and or into a river and you, you see 
the little ripples. If you're on a calm lake and you throw that, that pebble in, you see the ripples. And those ripples reach far and wide in a way that you would never have imagined. And so all of those amazing posts didn't just help me. They helped the family who couldn't believe so much outpouring of love from people they had never ever met nor probably would ever meet. And that that's a testament to you and and the good people that you are and the kind people that you are and that there is compassion and sympathy and unfortunately sometimes empathy for a situation like this and it just made my heart just it's like yes yeah, these are my peeps <laughs> These are, these are my peeps <laughs> and, and I was so blessed that, that they were able to take comfort in your words. There were postings, one, uh, I, there was a posting about, um, about how a daughter saw her mother when her mother passed right before she also looked up and smiled. I mean, that gave comfort and I don't know that I can ever repay you for that. At the same time, as I was saying, as I was saying, social media and, 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 and our world today is so instantaneous. It's so now. And when you do throw that pebble into that, that calm lake and you do see those ripples go out, you don't always know where they're going to land or who they're going to affect. And for for me to address this on, on, on YouTube, um, I think is important because not everybody was kind in their postings. Not everybody was nice or empathetic or sympathetic or showed compassion to my posts about my nephew. And it didn't hurt me. I have a lot of forgiveness in my heart and, and I believe that people who don't know better don't know better and we have a responsibility to help teach them better so the people who were not so kind on facebook about my posts and had some not so nice things to say i forgive you and you didn't hurt me if that was your intent you didn't it didn't it didn't hurt me you hurt my family. These are people who have never met you, who have not put themselves out on social media for commentary. I understand, I've opened myself up for that. I didn't know I was doing it at the time when I started YouTube, but I have since learned you must take the good and the bad. It can't always be accolades. Sometimes you need to hear the cold, hard truth. And when it's about me, I can, I can accept that, but your comments hurt my family. You threw a pebble into a, into a stream or a river or a lake, whatever you want to call it, and you didn't know how far those ripples were going to reach. I'm hoping, because I know you watch this and I know you follow me on Facebook, those of you who were not so kind, I am hoping that by explaining this to you, you have either felt this in your own personal life where somebody has done something maybe maybe with the intent of, of hurting you and ultimately hurt somebody you cared about that you, they shouldn't have ever been hurt it shouldn't have involved them at all or it maybe maybe you were the unintended victim of somebody else's pebble in the river and you were hurt by somebody else who was intending to inflict a little hurt on somebody on, on another person when you post when you reach out when you use social media when you talk to somebody when you when when you have interaction with another human being is it kind what you have to say? Is it helpful what you have to say? 
Or is it something that will just make you feel better in that moment? I forgive you for the things that you've said. I don't have the time to, to hold on to hurtful words. I have a life that is full and, and family and friends and SMS peeps that support me and that's where I choose to put my energy. But before you post something or before you say something or think about who else that might affect and was it really worth it? Really? So, half of you have probably turned off by now and that's okay. This is my platform and I get to say what I want to say and I hope that I've said it in a way that is not mean-spirited or in a way that is accusing people or I'm just saying when given the opportunity be better we all can I can be better at times absolutely so try to be better and remember those ripples go a long way when you throw that stone the unintended victim that may get hurt was it worth it Okay, so for those of you who are still with me, thank you for hanging with me. And thank you again for the love and the support for my nephew. It's been a difficult week. And I'm very glad that I had you to lean on. And I am so grateful that my family had you to lean on. So God bless all of you. Now we are going to suck it up buttercup and I'm going to get those tears right out of my eyes. And we are going to play today because I have got beautiful things to share with you and show you and fabulous product and technique you might not know about and let's get into it shall we I think it's time to get started hmm but I don't have any cards over here let me grab a couple so I can show you something <laughs> okay so if you want to post a comment on today's YouTube for a chance to be a winner winner chicken dinner all you have to do is post below to be able to do that you have to be a subscriber over there and uh, next week I will announce the four winners Thank you, everybody. I'm so grateful to you. All right, down we go. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom on in. Should probably put my glasses on because I can't see. Okay, zoom on in, tilt on down, and let's give you some samples of what we've got going. So it is all about the guy. It's all about Simply Defined. <laughs> It's everything from cars and motorcycles and vintage all the way to look at how cute are those cowboy boots. I love them. Okay, so that's a kind of a peek of what we've got going on today. Let me get started and bring over the dies first. So first thing I want to do is just show you the dies that we have for sale. Now remember Simply Defined is a brand by Scrapbooking Made Simple. These are my designs. The only place you can find these dies are at Scrapbooking Made Simple and they are value priced. This is a full A2 size die. Full A2 size die. And if you want just one die, just this one, let's say you just like this one, it's only $13.99, which you all know is a wonderful value. But if you buy the collection of all six, well then the I Want It All price is about $9.99 for each die. Again, all of them are full A2 size. And we've done We've done definitely guy related. Although wait till you say, I think I'll make these into cowgirl boots, right? Hello. <laughs> Love the boots. Do I do I do. And let's see, then we've got my the old jalopy. And again, full A2 size. So you know you're getting uh, I mean, it's a large die, and I know that there are manufacturers out there 
who sell a die approximately the same size for anywhere. They can be upwards of $26 for some manufacturers. And then we've got um, then we've got the cowboy hat. Look at the cowboy hat with everything involved. And uh, howdy partner and yeehaw and cowboy up. <laughs> I had room. So with my dies, I pay for the metal and I'm paying for this much metal. So if I'm paying for this much metal and I've got all of this in there, I'm gonna put as much as I possibly can in. And then the very last one is kind of a build a scene. So it kind of gives you the opportunity to build beautiful scenery. And then I gave you all the little animals. Look at how cute are they, right? The sun, the the clouds, the ways to do the mountains, the ways to do the streams are all in here and and all the darling little animals to populate your whether it be a field or a mountain range or whatever you're doing. So this is the collection of all six and again it is they're $9.99 each if you do the I want it all and if there's just one or two that you like or you don't like any of them that's okay too it's not for everybody but if there's just one or two that you like then they're $13.99 each which is still an amazing value price so I am going to get started I think I think I'm gonna get started with the horses so the horse die now the way these work is on several of them they are a multiple die set. So here you have just the horses. If I can get them off that, there we go. You have just the horses. This is a die that's just the horses. Then you have a die that is just a frame. And then you have a die that is the mountainscape that puts the mountains in there. It is not one die that pulls everything out. This die actually cuts in. And you're like, what do you mean it cuts in? Well, let's go ahead and let's take a piece of paper and you know what, I will do it so that we can do the whole thing and let's just trim it on down. Now this is a chemically etched dye or a wafer dye. It is super thin, hence the name wafer dye. I'm going to be using a Sizzix Big Shot machine today. Most of my dyes do require a precision base plate. This is a precision base plate and it is meant for intricate dies. If you are using a Sizzix machine and you are using a Big Shot, a Vagabond, a Big Shot Fabia, a Big Shot Vintage, an older machine, a Big Kick, you may need this machine. If you have a Big Shot Plus, they say you don't need a precision base plate because the pressure is substantially different, the pressure points in the roller. However, I do know that there are people who have had their plus for several years and over time your machine will loosen up and you may need to get yourself a precision base plate. So how does this work? It's pretty simple. Hard to believe that this little machine here is going to cut paper, but it is. Now your machine is going to come, if you buy one new, your machine is going to come with a uh, base plate and a solo shim. And a solo shim is required when you're doing something as thin as a wafer die. If I was doing a die that is not so intricate, let's say I was doing the frame, I just wanted to cut out a rectangle, I would not need a precision base plate because this is an open frame die and your hand can fit right through it, easy peasy. So this is not intricate at all. But then look at this one and you can see all the different cuts that need to come out. Big difference. So if I was doing this die alone, it would be easy. Oh, I've got that sticky stuff from the, it would be easy to just cut a piece of paper. In fact, we'll just go ahead and we'll just cut it. Cut a piece of paper and call it done. No precision base plate. So I have got the base platform, I have got the solo shim, I have got a cut plate, and you're going to get two clear plates with your machine. Eventually they're going to look like this because they're going to get cut into, and that is what they're supposed to look like after time, and eventually you will replace them, 
and then we use a do not cut plate so this is a plate that is a different color or has glitter in it whatever it is that designates it as a plate that you don't want to cut into and that just keeps this from warping this top plate because it's never cut into it really doesn't warp so it keeps your machine it keeps the feed very even all the way through and it just makes it easier to die cut now, hard to believe that there's a roller in this machine, just a metal roller that's applying enough pressure to that metal piece to cut paper. There's no blade on these dies at all, no blade. And yet it cut paper from the pressure of that roller. That makes it great for crafting with people who are not familiar with, with die cutting machines or seniors or kids because they really can't do anything to hurt themselves. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my precision base plate because I know that I wanna cut those horses. So my precision base plate, I'm gonna still leave my base plate and my solo shim, but my precision base plate's going to take the place of that clear bottom. Remember I had that on right here? It's going to take the place. And it doesn't matter if you have the first version of a precision base plate, the second or the third. This is the chrome version. We actually sell this as part of a bundle if you want a machine where you get it for free. And it's just a really great thing to have. It's a tool, it's important. If you're going to start die cutting and you're gonna start die cutting intricate things, you're going to want that precision base plate. Now I'm gonna take my die. I've already cut out the frame that goes with it. So I'm just gonna take my horse die and lay it right there on top. And then I'm gonna take a plate and it really doesn't matter what kind of plate, the older the better. In fact, let me see, is this one even older? The older the plate, the better, because the pressure from putting it through the machine with the precision base plate is going to leave some indents, not cuts, but like almost like embossing imprints. So let's go ahead and let's cut this out. Bring over my machine and send it on through. Now this may require more than one roll because it is more intricate. I often will just take it up, oh, but it already moved. Oh, let's see. Oh, no, cut through first time. I often will take it and will rotate. So it was going this way. I'll rotate it just one way or another, just a little rotate because when you send it back, in fact, we'll just go ahead and do it. I lined it up so I shouldn't get a double cut. It just hits the roller in a new and unique way, which allows it to cut. Going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth without moving your paper and your die is not gonna help you cut. <laughs> Cause it's hitting the roller exactly the same way. And we need it to hit the roller in a different way because everybody's machine, everybody's machine has got a sweet spot somewhere and all of them are a little different. Okay. So as you can see, the horses don't actually cut out. They cut into the paper. And let's see how close I get, Doris. Oh, that wasn't bad. It's really close to me though. The trash can there, the, <laughs> most of the time I'm like, 80-20 and the 80 is the miss. <laughs> and then Mr. SMS's floor looks like a hot mess when I'm done, but <laughs> it's only creativity, right? So there, there we have the horses. So they didn't actually cut out the paper, they cut into the paper. And I could have just, I could have put them right in the center here if I wanted a bigger piece of paper and had a bigger frame around it because it's not going to cut out. But I utilized the frame that comes with it to get the A2 size. Now I said that it does come with, does come with some mountain tops.
And let's just put those mountain tops in so you can see them. The mountain tops are also going to cut right in. They're not going to cut out. They're going to cut in. And I can put them anywhere I want. I can put them high. I can put them low. Anywhere above my horses. And I'm going to send it on through. Mm, move it over just a little bit. Now, could I have I cut, and cut my horses and my mountaintops at the same time? Um, yeah, I suppose you could. Gosh, I want it to just be right there. Okay. Oh, I hear them coming in this morning. I'm here early Friday morning and not late Thursday night. So I hear everybody getting here to work. <laughs> I told them yesterday, okay, when you come in, no cha-cha or... You know, <laughs> keep it keep it down a little bit. And of course, the Dodgers won last night, so I'm sure that there's going to be some rallying out there. Uh, we are Giants fans, my husband and I, and my staff are Dodger fans. So <laughs> it makes for a um, a fun afternoon when they are playing. <laughs> and they they really pulled it out last night. That was very impressive. Or the other night. Okay, there are my. There are my mountains. Easy peasy, right? This is so simple. But we want to take it up a notch. We want to take it up a notch. And I want to use a paper that maybe you would not think to use. So we brought in, and I'm limited. <laughs> I'm limited as to what we have. We brought in mirror cardstock from Hunky Dory. And this is the Galaxy Collection. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. There's three different colors. And you get 10 sheets of each. And you know, you might not have looked at this and gone, hmm, horses. I don't see it. I know, but wait, we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna take a piece and I'm gonna decide. I can either cut my I can cut my square first. Or I can, I can, if I want to, I can cut my horses first. I just need to make sure that I have enough room to do my square. In fact, this time we will do our horses first. So, no, I think. I don't know. Do I like that one? I'm trying to decide where I want to cut. You know what? I'm just gonna go think long, think wrong. I know, I know, but I really, really. Okay, just do it, Stacy. You're like, get on with it, girl. I heard you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that over there. This time I'm gonna cut my horses first. Just so you can see that I can cut in. The horse is down. Gosh, am I going to want to use this? Ooh, it's by the hair of a chinny chin chin, but let's see. And let's send it on through. Roll it through once. Give it a little bit of a rotate. Send it back. And let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, it looks great. Can you see the cuts? Easy peasy mac and cheesy. And then they all fall out. Now you could save these and paper, you could paper piece these into a piece of black paper cut out with the horses, absolutely. Are we doing that today? No, <laughs> but you could. <laughs> okay. So all the little doodads out of my horses. And 
away they go. And then if I backed it in the black, now you can see the black courses, or if I backed it in the white. Now you can see the horses coming through. This paper is beautiful for it. I love the paper for it. It's absolutely gorgeous. But I don't want to just leave it like this. I want to do more. I don't want just a plain piece of paper in the back. I want to take it to the next level. And how am I going to do that? Well, it's going to be easier than you thought. It really is. Um, I'll go ahead and See, I can cut my frame. It's close. But let's go ahead and wheel it on through. I do not need a precision base plate to do that. And the reason being you don't use a precision base plate is because there's nothing intricate in this open frame die and it will begin to warp your die. In fact, I used it once and did that. I warped my die. Is that the end of the world if your die starts to warp a little bit? No, it's metal. You're able to just kind of push it or move it back a little bit and tweak it back, but my die's forever going to be slightly warped and I'm going to forever be okay with it. Who would have thought that a collection called Galaxy would look so good on my horses? I love the colors of it. Okay, send it on through. Hopefully I didn't move it too much. And this is now going to cut it to a nice A2 size. I don't have to go back and forth because this is not an intricate die. And bam, perfect cut. All right, so like I said, I wanted to make this into something a little more than what it is. I just didn't want to put a piece of white paper behind it or black paper behind it. I wanted to really um, make those horses look a little more textured and a little bit more alive. And it is very, very, very easy to do. I'm going to grab my Memento ink. Now, I'm not using my Hero Arts inks today, my little cubes, because for this collection, the Memento colors seem to lend more to it. It's one of the reasons why I have the Memento uh, dew drops and I have the Hero Arts cubes, is that they fill in color spaces where, where Memento was lacking, Hero had, and where Hero was lacking, Memento had. So it gave me a beautiful, well-rounded set of inks that are smaller in a, in a much more affordable size. Now I'm gonna take, this one happens to be Desert Sand, and I'm just gonna Literally, I'm not even going to take a blender. And I'm just going to get some on there. So the Memento ink has a felt pad and not a foam pad, which makes it really hardy. It's really nice to have a, I want to make sure that on my side, oh yeah, I'm plenty big. It's really nice to have the felt pad because it it disperses the ink nicely. If you push, it doesn't, it's not so much like the foam pad where it gives in when you push so much. So you don't necessarily end up with a image or the shape of your pad around it. Sometimes with a, a rub or a felt, no, a foam pad, if you push too hard, you deposit a ton of ink in that size, in the, in the shape of the, the pad. So the felt pad's really kind of nice. And I think I'm going to go in here with maybe a little bit of brown. And this is rich cocoa. And I might even use just a little bit of gray. So I'm not really thinking about where my color is going. I'm just trying to get my color on. And it kind of looks like a hot mess, right? But then 
when you put your horses over it, all of a sudden, they've come to life. They've got texture to them, and they've got multi-colors, and you can just, I, I didn't blend anything, and you can get it darker in some areas and lighter in other areas, and it's really up to you what you do because you're covering so much of the color that it disperses itself naturally, and it looks great. So, let's see. Do I even want... I don't know. I could even, if I really wanted to, ooh, I could even put a little bit of, um, of some metallic in there just for the fun of it. Let's see what happens. So I've got a couple different metallic inks. This is the Vintage Ombre ink from Hero Arts. You get three different metallics in one pad, and the colors are amazing. So the colors are totally metallic, and it's nice to get the three colors in the one pad. This is the Vintage Rust, and this one is uh, Vintage Metallic Steel. So it's nice to get, like I said, the three colors in the one pad, and it's beautiful Hero Arts ink. But we also have the Eyes ink, which is the smaller pigment pads. And there's the gold, the silver, and the copper. So if you're looking for just three colors, gold, copper, and silver, this may be the option for you. It really depends. The Hero Arts gives you a light, a medium, and a dark. A, a regular gold, like a, a heritage gold, and a copper. It just depends upon what's going to work best for you because you can also do the same with the colors from Aladdin if you just want three basic colors. Totally up to you. Now I've done it on the back so I'm going to go through and this time I am going to use a dauber and I've got the woodware daubers here and maybe I just add Yeah, I just add a little bit of gold. I don't know where it's going to land. Okay, I'm good. That's enough. And all I have to do now is cut cut my my frame. That's all I have to do is cut my frame and decide where I want to cut it. I think I'm going to cut it more towards the top. And trim this piece off. Bring my machine back over. I don't need to use a precision base plate. And I'm just cutting my rectangle. paper doesn't look overly beautiful. It's not well blended. It's colors just thrown down on it. Oh, am I there? Am I there? Did I move it just a little bit? Just a little bit. Let's just push that up just. There we go. Oh, and of course now it pulls all the way out. Of course it did. All right. So a single roll through, no problem. Creaks and cracks are okay. That means it's cutting. I might save that. I could use that as a frame someplace else. And now I've got my horses. They've got a little metallic on them. This is perfect paper for it. Let's see. I'm just going to put it down just so we quickly we can see it. Still have a few little odds and ends that need to be popped out. And on the top. 
top. You would do a much better job of taping it down than me. I am just going to get it down so it is on my paper. And one more little piece. I'm just going to get it down so it's here. Because this is cut to the exact same size, all you got to do is line it up. All right. And I didn't even put the mountains in. Bam, done. Trim it out, frame it out. Mat it. And you're good to go. But you saw how easy it was to color that paper. I didn't do much. I just threw a bunch of color down and then the dye is going to cover it and separate it a little bit lighter over here. I've got some metallic going in over there. So easy to do and you're done. It doesn't have to be much more than that. Add a sentiment, use this as a embellishment in your layout pages and we have three layouts for you today. Wahoo could you? Up oh, sirens. <laughs> Even early Friday morning. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So we did the horse and I think I'm going to move to the motorcycle because it's a completely different look and a totally different feel. And I'm going to do it a completely different way, but as simple as what I just showed you. Truly as easy as that. This, this couldn't get much easier. You just kind of Mush, 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 mush your color. Sound effects required. You kind of zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh with your color. Here, I'm still going to use, in fact, I don't even need to take this frame off. I can just use the one from the last. My motorcycle, again, cuts into the paper. Does not cut out, but cuts in to the paper. And the words that you get with this one is, always take the scenic route. So you get the sentiment with it. So I'm going to bring over again my mirror card stock from Hunky Dory. This time I'm going to choose that blue. And you get 10 sheets of the three colors for 30 sheets total. And I'm going to do, this time I know what I want. I want the stars and I want the night sky. So I'm going to cut it from here. I have found that I am in love with some of the hunky dory paper. We brought in some of their marble paper that was just, it's beautiful. I didn't use it in a YouTube, but my gosh, it's beautiful. They, they make some of the best mirror paper. It's so pretty. So I'm going to cut in and I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it right there. I would not be throwing this piece away. I, I would find a use for it someplace else. Again, this is a more intricate die cut. I'm gonna bring over my machine. I'm gonna bring over my precision base plate. Means I do not need my bottom cut plate because my precision base plate is gonna take the place of that. Put it down and cut away. So down, paper, die. I wanna leave kind of enough room around it so that I can put my frame or trim it out. and send it on through.
little creaks and cracks are fine. Send it through once, give it a rotate and bring it back. Ooh, I don't know if you can hear that. That's a good sound. That's the sound of it cutting. That's the sound you'd love to hear. <laughs> it's like, oh, yay. <laughs> and there it is. Hopefully you can see those cuts. If it hadn't cut somewhere, I could definitely just put it right back through my machine and rotate it. Just do a rotate in a different direction. And look at all my bits and pieces falling out. And there are a lot of bits and a lot of pieces to my motorcycle. I'm all about the detail. <laughs> I'm all about the, they're, they're definitely not um, basic dies, that's for sure. They definitely have a lot of detail to them. That's important to me. That's why my dies are so intricate. There are some manufacturers who really focus on die and stamp sets. And so their dies are more open dies because you're going to use them with a stamp and then you're going to cut around it. My dies tend to be very intricate. No stamp, no stamp needed. Okay, so I think I've got most of the stuff out. Let's see. Let's see what happens when I take a piece of paper behind it. Grab a piece of paper, white paper, because that's the easiest for you to see. I have still a few more bits and pieces. And sometimes it's easier to turn it on its backside because then I can really see where the bits and pieces haven't fallen out. With the mirror on the front side, it's kind of hard because it's, it's not blingy. I don't want you to think that the Galaxy paper, this mirror paper, is blingy because it's not. But it is. it does have a foil to it. So it does have a sheen to it. It's not high gloss, but it's not um, matte either. So turning it around, I can easily see what hasn't popped out yet. And then I can just push them out. And there is a ton of detail. All right, I think I think I've just about got it. So let's see what it looks like against white paper. There you go. Right? Cool motorcycle. I like it. I would never ride a motorcycle. Scares me to death, but I like the way they look. Now, instead of taking the ink like we did before and just going on white paper and making a background, this time I'm going to take something from Sizzix, from their opulent line. This is part of their silver opulent paper, and I believe it's the metal paper. Let me see. So this is the brushed metal. So this is silver opulent from Sizzix. It is beautiful paper. They make silver, they make gold, they make rose gold, they make charcoal, they make ivory, which is really more white. It's all specialty paper. And you've got a glitter paper and a matte paper and a brushed metal paper and a pearlized paper and a mirror paper. It is lovely. There's five different colors and 10 sheets of each. So we'll do, we'll do maybe the gold and the silver opulent on a YouTube yummy. Do I want, yeah, I think I want this one. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this down to size. Let's just hack off a piece and send it through my machine. see what we get. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. We're just cutting the rectangle. We've already done the intricate work, so no need for the precision base plate. I'm going to go straight onto my, my cut mat. Get 
put that on there and send it on through. Just like that, I've got my rectangle. And now my rectangle is going to fit behind here. Now it's up to me. Do I want to leave this bigger? I can cut it down to size if I want to, but maybe I want to leave it. Maybe I want a 5 by 7 card. Maybe I want a 4 by 6 card. Maybe I don't want an A2 size card. That's the beauty of it cutting into the paper as opposed to cutting out. You're then able to make the size that you want. So let's just trim this on down. I'm just going to freehand it. That'll be good enough for now. And this time I've left a lot at the top. But I only need the silver. I don't need it to be the whole size. No, I don't. I just need it to cover the motorcycle. Right? That's all I need it to do. So let's go ahead and let's tape that in place. So I'm going to grab some Stacy tape and I'm just going to tape it in place. And I'm taping the two pieces of paper together. I'm not ready to pull off my, my liner piece to expose my sticky. I'm just going to tape the two pieces together. In fact, I wonder if I leave that one. What if I don't so I can, well, what if I do this one so I don't, so you, I can pull it up for you so you can see what I've done. Maybe that's a better idea. Can I get that off? Stacy tape is, Stacy tape super strong, not overly forgiving. Hmm. All right. That'll do. Okay, so I've got my I've got my motorcycle with the silver behind it. A little bit different than my horses that I made my own paper to back it with. Now I've got silver. But what if I want to do something with that silver? I've got the mountains, I've got the road. What if I want to do something with that silver? Well, easy peasy. This is where your alcohol ink markers come in. These are by Couture Creations. They're $1.99. They're beautiful alcohol marker. They have a lovely brush tip, a really nice brush tip. And instead of a chisel tip, they have a bullet point so you can write with it or do smaller spaces. They have 108 colors. They're a buck 99. I can't do any better price than a buck 99. So, and they, I, I'm not gonna put them in the YouTube yummy because they're just $1.99. Couture Creations alcohol ink markers. And again, this is a hundred, there's 108 colors. I'm just playing with these today. These are the ones I put in my little set. So I'm going to take out, I'm going to take out a green. Let's see. And I'm going to go into that mountain. And I'm just going to color that mountain green. Now it's not going to matter if it gets on my paper or not. It's not going to see, you're not going to see it. So I'm going to go in here and all these little mountains, that are silver right now, I'm gonna color them green. And why am I doing it with an alcohol ink marker? Because that silver paper is a coated paper. So it starts as white paper, but then they come in and they put this coating of, of color, or this metal effect over the top of it, making it non-porous. This side, porous. This side, non-porous. So if I were to ink on here, and let's see, and ink on here, the 
This is a dye-based ink. This is an alcohol-based ink. My alcohol-based ink is going to dry. My dye-based ink is never going to dry. My alcohol-based ink is going to dry really quick. My dye-based ink, you're going to be able to, it just, it will never dry on this paper. Dye-based ink is meant to go into paper, not on non-porous materials. To do a non-porous material, you have to use an alcohol-based product, and that is what alcohol markers do. So I couldn't go in here with, let's say, my Tim Holtz Distress inks, or my Tombow water, uh, my Tombow dual brush markers. Those are not alcohol markers. Those are water-based and dye-based inks. You need. You could go in here with Sharpies. You could go in here with Bix. Anything that is considered a permanent marker. So if you can write on metal or plastic or glass, you can color on non-porous paper. So I'm just going to go in here and color. And get everywhere I want green, green. And I don't have to be overly careful. Actually, I don't have to be careful at all. And there, I've now done my mountains green. But that's not the only green I want them to be. Go in here and layer more color. I want them to have some definition to them as well. So I'm just going to take another green, not this one, different green. It's what this green looks like and the green I was using. Probably two greens you wouldn't think go together, but I'm just going to throw it down and we'll see what happens. And I'm just going to kind of put it towards the top of my mountains. And I'm just literally scribbling just over the tops of my mountains. And now can you see I've changed the color of my mountains? So now it's not just one green. You've got a little bit of lighter green on top, a little darker green on the bottom. And then I can come in here with, let's say, a black or a charcoal. And I could do I could do my road. I'm thinking maybe the charcoal is better. This is really black. Let's try something a little bit lighter. And I could just go in there and color everything that's supposed to be the road. So that black, that black was covering up literally all the silver and if you want that that's fine but it was really I mean it, it was making it so you couldn't even tell there was silver paper underneath and I kind of want a little bit of that so it doesn't look very pretty underneath but when you put your top onto it all of a sudden it starts to make sense and that paper is so beautiful. You've got the night sky going on, but you didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to do the night sky at all. So now I can turn it over and now I can add, because I wanted you to see what it looks like. All I did was scribble, 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 scribble. And now I can 
put it down. And then it's kind of up to me. Kind of up to me what I want it to look like when I'm done. Super easy, super pretty. I could go in there, I could take that black and go in there and do, maybe I just do the handlebars with the black. Just do the handlebars and the black. Your decision. Alcohol ink markers, you can go in there and do whatever makes your heart happy. Absolutely. Let's see. This side. And then you can mat it, use it as an embellishment. I could have cut this smaller and made it so that my my motorcycle became a bookmark for somebody or a luggage tag to go on their motorcycle. Options are really up to you. But now it's time we move on. So we've done the background where it was super simple by just smudging and using some colors from our Memento inks, whatever inks you have. If you're working on paper like this, doesn't matter what inks you have. Do you want to mix and match between Distress and Oxide and Memento and, and Lawn Fawn and um, Hero Arts? And you can mix and match anything because you're going on paper. But with this one, this one you need to use an alcohol-based product. So let me just throw that down really quick. I'm not sure what that was. I don't know if you heard that, but maybe kids are out of school already. It's Friday. They're, they're, school's back in... Oh, look at it. I've even got some already on there, so I don't have to... All right, so I'm just going to pull this liner off now. And pull this liner off. And this one, you would do a much better job in taping everything down together. And I want a super thin... Maybe I want to, no, maybe I want a bigger mat. All right. do my black and then we're done with this one and then you're done that was so easy it was one cut one piece of paper behind it taking some alcohol markers coloring in matting and calling it done having that galaxy paper takes a lot of the work out <laughs> if you're in a rush that paper is wonderful but now we're going to move on we're going to move on to some of the dreamweaver product the i knew nothing about never heard of it didn't know about it hadn't used it and Peggy from Stampendous, who Stampendous bought Dreamweaver a couple years ago, she sent it to me and she said, what do you think of this? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Let me play. It's their Dreamweaver Crackle Paste. It's a pretty interesting little paste. 
I know that there is other crackle paste on the market. I think Tim Holtz has his own crackle paste. This one is four ounces and I think Tim's is three ounces. This is very, I, I've never played with Tim's so I can't do a direct comparison, but this is very creamy and Dreamweaver was known for their pastes. They did beautiful pastes and stencils to go with. And unfortunately, when this is sold out, this is sold out. It originally retailed for $10.49, and we're, by, by Peggy's blessing, we're able to do it for $5.99. She said, yep, we need it to go. We want you to use it. If you like it, can you play with it? Can you see it? And if we do, we'll make it worthwhile for your customers. And I said, well, okay, I'll use it. I'll play it. I'll see if I like it, and if I do, We'll make it worthwhile for the SMS peeps. I mean, we got to keep crafting affordable. And when deals like this come along, you can't turn them down if the product is really good product. And it is. So how do you use this? Well, I'm going to do it on black and I'm going to do it on white. And I'm going to show you. There you go. It's very, very creamy. You can use any kind of a, I mean, you can use something as easy as a plastic knife to get it on. It's really up to you. These are the tools we have from the Art Sherpa. We have a few of these sets left, and so they'll be on the YouTube at a ridiculously low price. Um, but, you know, it's, they're just a palette set. Now, with this product, you can let it set on its own. You can absolutely just do it and then come back an hour or so later and when it dries, it will crackle on its own. And there's also a difference between how much you put down. The thicker your coat, the bigger your cracks are. The thinner your coat, the more hairline your cracks are. The thicker the coat, the longer it takes to dry. The thinner the coat, quicker it takes to dry, but again, you're looking at more hairline cracks. So I'm gonna just put some of this down. And I'm gonna put it on black too. just so you can see how much I'm putting down. It's kind of hard to see it on the white. So where I have it heavier over here, the cracks are gonna be more pronounced. And if I put it thin, thinner over here, the cracks are going to be a little more hairline. Think that's good? I want to get it kind of heavy in one area. I'll just put my finger in that. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to say that's good. Now this is going to kind of, you need to seal it. You need to close it. You need to close it. As it dries around the edges, you will see it will kind of flake off the edges. But as long as it's closed, it's going to stay dry. So here it's kind of, as it's dried, it has flaked off. I just need to make sure that I close it well. You don't need to put a piece of, um, I don't know, foil or saran wrap. Do they still call it saran wrap, plastic wrap? I just got my, I just got my, my wet wipe in this one. Man, the white's kind of hard to see, but we're just going to go for it. It's only paper, right? And it's supposed to crackle. So what's the worst that can happen? It crackles. All right, to make this go faster, I'm going to use a heat tool. That way you'll be able to see it much faster. Can you use a heat tool at home? Absolutely. I'm going to do the white first and then I'll do the black. And I've got my heat tool on high. And 
and I'm going to turn it so I can kind of see where it's cracking. And I'm just going to move it down like I would an embossing powder. Now it takes a little time for the heat tool. This is a paste. So you're asking it to dry the paste. And if you leave your heat tool for there too long, it will bubble. I'm okay with the bubbling because it just adds more texture. Okay, I haven't done the middle yet, but let's see if you can see. So I can't tell if you can see the cracking and the crackling or not. Hard for me to see in the camera what you can see. And again, if you leave your heat tool too long, it's going to bubble. I don't mind the bubbling. If I have a little bubbling, I just move my heat tool away. And I need to move it so I can see what I've got. And you see how close I'm getting, and I'm not burning anything. You see how close I'm getting with my heat tool and I'm not burning. So I'm going to give that a second. I don't think it's completely dry. I think where it's heavier, it's still um, it's still a little wet. And I'm going to we're going to do that in just a minute. I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to show you what happens. Now I've put my finger in this one a half a dozen times. Truly, Stacy. Oh. Okay. Heat tool. There. <laughs> Let's put a little more on because I put my finger in it a dozen times. Maybe I should have done them one at a time. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> it's like me and stickles. That's why I like the Aladdin product because it dries so fast. Me and stickles, man, it's all over me by the time I'm done. I've put my arm through it. And now the the cracks will absolutely go in the way you've put your paste down. So just know that if you lay your paste this way, your cracks are going to go that way. If you lay it that way, your cracks are going to go that way. Let's see if I can keep my hands out of it this time. And let's grab my heat tool. So on the black, you're going to be able to see it much easier when it cracks. The thicker the paste, the bigger the cracks. The thicker the paste, the longer it takes to dry. But I'm using a heat tool. And you may end up bubbling it, but I'm okay with that. Okay, now I'm thinking you can see those cracks pretty good. Right? It's very cool looking. Let's keep going. Let's do the whole thing. So on this side, no cracks. On this side, cracks. This side, no heat yet. This side, heat. I remember doing this on my furniture years and years ago before Mr. SMS and I had children. I bought unfinished furniture and I went through and I 
sanded it and I stained it and I crackled it and I... <laughs> this brings back memories. And you can see just how close I'm getting. Now, let's see if I can get it to bubble. Oh, there it goes. I don't know if you saw that bubbling. I'm okay with the bubbles. To me, it just adds more dimension, more texture. If you don't want bubbles, you just keep moving your, moving your heat tool. Now, I'm not 100% sure that this is totally dry. So I'm gonna take both of these and I'm gonna flip them over and I'm also gonna heat the back side. Not gonna hurt anything, it's just if it's not dry underneath, I wanna just add a little heat. To dry the back side. Will a blow dryer do this? Probably not. A blow dryer is not going to have enough heat to get that cracking going. Okay, I still think it's a little wet, but we're going to go for it. Now, what to do with it? You've got it cracked, but now what do you want to do with it? Well, that comes into play. That's up to you. I'm going to clean my space just a little bit. Now you can color it. I'll tell you, if it's not totally dry, the color of your ink is going to change slightly. This one doesn't feel totally dry up there. So let me add, let me add some, maybe some brown. So I'm just gonna go in Yeah, see up here, it's not totally dry, so my ink isn't cementing. If I want to go back and make sure that my ink takes, I need to make sure that that's dry. Let's try now. Let it cool for just a second better. Now my ink is taking. And I'm just putting it straight on. And you can see where the fine cracks are. And you can see where the big cracks are. It has a direct difference as to how much paste you put down. Can you go back and wipe it off? Sure. Now you can really see those fine cracks because that ink is stuck in them. You can see those bigger cracks. It's entirely up to you how much ink you want to lay down. And Look at it fill those cracks. And you may be saying, I'm not so sure about this. I don't know if I'm into the crackled look, the distressed look. I know, but wait. <laughs> Just wait. Um, let's play with the white a little bit. But oh, I can tell you the white is not dry. I can, can you see that it's still kind of got a sheen to it? I can tell the white's not dry. Um, but let's go ahead and we'll play with maybe some of the, the red. Yeah, I 
can tell the, this is not quite dry yet. And then I can take my baby wipe and kind of wipe it off. And where those cracks are, you can see those super fine line cracks going on. Absolutely. And maybe give it a chance to dry for a minute. Maybe add a little more, maybe a little bit of brown. And maybe, maybe a little bit of gold in there. Just like you're doing furniture. If you've ever wanted to do furniture, try making cards first and you'll learn how to make the crackle really work for you. All right. I know it looks kind of weird, but it's gonna be fabulous when we're done, I promise you. Let's see, what do I have? Um, how about the boots? So again, the boots are two dies. You have the frame die, which will allow you to cut the whole piece out, or the boot die, which allows you to cut in. Did I do it big enough? Oh, I'm just a little small. I'm just a little small. All right, let's do it again real quick. So this time I'll have my die and I'll know how much I need. So can you see all the white? That's from the crackle drying. So this time, let's grab a bigger piece of paper and let me put down enough. And we'll do the boots. Okay, let's do the crackle again. And this time, let me make sure I cover enough. So I'm just gonna go zip, zip, zip. I'm not gonna give it a lot of thought. I'm not gonna give it a lot of time. I just wanna make sure that I give it enough, that I have enough space, that I cover enough so that I can do my whole, my whole background. Zoop, zap, zoop. I'm just buttering it on. that's probably oh big enough yay all right let's do this one and then I'm gonna do a black one again super fast this time because you've already seen it once bring over my heat tool do my best to keep my fingers out of it. And just let it do its thing.
Oh yeah. Oh, this side's really cracking good. Really cracking. Oops. And I'm as close as I possibly can be, and I'm not burning my paper. So if you have a cylinder tool, you want to try and make sure you start out high and come down and down and down until you realize, oh, nope, too close, back it up. Okay, I think. I think this one's pretty good. Flip it over, add some heat to the back. And just like that, now let's do one in the black. Now people ask, does this have a smell to it? Mm, not really, no. If, if at anything, I mean, you really have to breathe it in. There might be a slight odor, but it's pretty much an, an odorless um, paste, which is really nice. And let's do this one. Just gonna butter it up. Try to keep my hands out of it. My fingernails. <laughs> oh no, I want it heavy there. Oh, come back, put some back on. What do you think, you think that's good enough? Some going this way and some going that way and that way when it cracks. Man, I'm good at picking it up. There's cracks going every which way. All right, good enough. Let's try. And I think that's big enough. Just take one of my... Uh, well, I think wrong. I need to go a little wider. I'm just going to drag some of this that way. Go just a little wider. Okay, now I've got some working room, and let's just get this done. And this one you'll be able to see much easier because it's on black. And as it dries, it just starts to crack. So you can see where it's cracking and where I haven't.
little bubble there, not a problem for me. We're trying to get as much texture as we can. So between the cracking and the bubbling, it's just distressed and vintage and And at the price, if you're not sure, $5.99 as opposed to $10.49 is a big difference. It gives you the chance to go, you know, I wanted to try it. I can at $5.99, yeah, I can, I can do that. You know, $10.49, you kind of have to think about it. How am I going to use it? Am I going to use it enough? Do I really love it? But for $5.99, just don't go get a Starbucks. <laughs> Skip a coffee and get your crackle paste. And then you can try it and you can play with it. And it may not be something you go to every day, but it may be something that adds just the right element for just the right project that you are working on. I'm gonna flip it over and do a little heat from the back. big old bubble there. All right, I think we're good. And I think this one feels pretty dry. All right, let's go back and color them real quick so that we can move on. Now I can tell you, with the, once you put the crackle on, getting them to die cut, using this to die cut is very difficult. It doesn't want to cut through. It just doesn't. The paste is too thick. It's, it's too much for these little lines to try to do, it just is. So let's go ahead and let's color this one. I think we did this one like in the reds, yeah? And then I can wipe off if that makes my heart happy. Up to you. If you don't want so much red, but you want it to fill those fine lines, totally up to you. But can you see all that crazing and that crackling? Then maybe a little bit of brown, just for the sake of it. just to vintage it up a little bit. And then just to add a little bit of oomph. Maybe a little bit of gold. I know it kind of looks like a mess, but let's go ahead and we're going to die cut. Now remember what I said, I can't take my boot and die cut my boot. It's just too thick. The crackle has got, the paste is made it too thick for my little die to get through. If I was using a steel rule die, steel, S-T-E-E-L, S-T-E-E-L, rule, R-U-L-E, die, which would be very much like a Sizzix um, Tim Holtz alterations die or the thick dies. Those have actual blades in them, which would die cut this out easy peasy. This does not have a blade. As you can see, I can't cut myself with it. So I'm asking it to do too much trying to go through that. But what if I cut this out of black? my machine on over. 
precision base plate. Die. And let's send it on through. Little creaks and cracks are going to be okay. probably going to want to rotate. So my die has come out. I'm just going to click it back into place. Kind of click it back into place so then I can rotate and cut again. All that little piece wants to fall out. Okay, let's click it back in. up and let's send it back through. Hopefully I avoid a double cut, but it's only paper. So if I do, you'll see what happens if you accidentally double cut. Oh, it looks good. No double cut there. Woo -hoo -hoo. Looks good to me. Thinking no double cut. Do dots and odds and ends fall out. those I want to cut those boots out so I made girl cowboy boots now all I have to do is take my die line it on up in fact I'm gonna bring my this is a non precision base plate it's an open frame die so I do not need that precision base plate bring my machine right back on over Put my cut plate down, put my die down, and now line it up. Oh, well, hello there. Could it be? That was quick enough, wasn't it? It's sticking to me, though. It's got that, the goobers from the tape holding it to the packaging. And I thought my tape was strong. Those goobers are uber strong. All right. And let's send it on through. Little creaks and cracks, no problem. It should only take one pass because it's a non intricate die. Now cut it out. And now I can decide where I want it to be. Now I can decide what I want to do. So I'm going to take, I still got some doodads in there. I'm just going to take a little bit of Stacy tape and put it down. probably use sticky dots to do the same thing but I just want to get it down so I can cut some pieces okay let's 
let's just take these off and wrap them back into each other. So you would do a much better job of taping down, and in fact, I would use sticky dots to get it down. But I just want to figure out where do I want it? I can still see little doodads that need to come out. <laughs> Where, where do I want it? Where makes my heart happy on this piece? About right there. Okay. And then I like it with a little bit of a border. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a border around it. And then maybe one more border. No. Ooh. Okay, that looks good because I've got the gold in there. Oh, that looks great. Okay, let's put it down and cut it out. Put it down and cut it out. Oh, tape, tape, tape. So using the heat tool with the Dreamweaver Crackle Paste, much, much faster. Don't have a heat tool? That's fine. Then you just let it dry on its own. And as it dries on its own, it will crackle all by itself. Don't feel you have to have a heat tool to make this work because you don't. too straight on layering that but you know what God loves a trier and if nothing else I'm a trier wait how cute is that for girl boots isn't that sweet and you've got that texture of the crackle going on in the background and we've thrown in some of the uh, gold metallic ink on top of it to just add that little little extra something something it's not like wow it's gold metallic it's like hey hey i'm a little soft gold i'm i'm a little soft gold and i'm not i'm not like bling i'm not my cousin woo i'm soft gold i'm cool gold i'm mellow gold <laughs> and i love it but we have the black Okay, feels pretty dry. Now if I start moving it, it's going to start cracking. A little wet there. Oh, well, see, it's starting to crack. Let's just take it real quick and let me add a little more heat to it and see if I can get it. You know what, I'm gonna let it crack and you'll see what happens when it cracks. So where I got a bubble, it's flaking off a little bit. Can you see that? I got a bubble in it and where I got the bubble, it flaked off, but I'm okay with that. It just adds texture. It's right there. Let's go ahead and let's color. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do some of the light brown. 
And as I, oh, see, I got a bit where I had a bubble, it cracked off. I'm okay with that. I'm looking for texture. I'm all about the texture. I'm all about the definition. And then maybe a little bit of dark brown. And then maybe a little bit of my gray. And then just for good measure, maybe a little bit of my blue. And do I want to wipe off or do I not? Wipe on, wipe off. Wipe on. Wipe off. Okay. Looks a little, little a bit like a like a mess. Maybe a little silver. Why not? If you're gonna throw the kitchen sink at it, throw the kitchen sink at it. A little bit of metallic. Good enough. Just a little bit of metallic going on, just to make it shine. Now remember, I can't cut into this, so I have to set it aside and choose what dye I want to go over the top of it. And I am thinking maybe my, I don't know, maybe my car? Now my car, my car is a one dye. <laughs> So it's going to cut the frame and the car all at once. Get that goopy off. Oh, man. Like I said, I thought Stacy tape was strong. That stuff is new. Whatever they use to get it down onto that paper for packaging is wowie kadowie. Okay. Piece of black paper intricate dye let's bring over my big shot machine my precision base plate my paper which I can snip down because I know the size that I need since it is a one cut. Kind of rotate it a little bit. Let's send it on through. Creaks and cracks are fine. Send it on back. Let's see how well I did. Oh, looks good. All my little bits and pieces come out. Making up the detail of the car because it's all in the detail. And for me, the more detail in the die, the better. Even if that means it takes a few minutes to get all the bits and pieces out. 
once you've got them out. And as you can see with the precision base plate, they pretty much just fall right out. I'm sure if you have a Platinum 6 or a Platinum 8 or a Gemini machine, your machines will cut them beautifully. These will not fit through a sidekick. They are way too wide. They will fit through a cuddle bug machine if you still have a cuddle bug machine. Cuddle bugs are getting harder and harder to find as they have been discontinued. All right. I love my old jalopy. Now, I think that this is still too wet. I think it might still be a little wet, but I'm going to go ahead and try. Let's see. Let's see. Um, let's see. Okay. So, sticky dots. I'm going to try and open a sticky dot and see if I can get it to go down. You want that paste to be completely dry. Sticky dots are hundreds of thousands of little dots. Hundreds and thousands of them. You put your die down. I did them with the intent for intricate dies because they are so hard to glue down. You get 10 sheets, 10 eight and a half by 11 sheets or eight by 10 sheets and they're $9.99. I can tell you I have this feeling that um, I think we're going to have to have a, I think I'm going to get a price increase on these from the manufacturer who does them for me. But time will tell. And then decide where you want your old jalopy. And down he goes. I like it with a little bit of the edge. Oh my gosh, I think that looks so cool. Oh, oh, oh. And now what color do we want to mat it on? What do you think? Right? They're so cool on the on the crackle paint. The crackle paste. That crackle paste is pretty rock star. And it's easy to do and it adds texture where there wasn't texture before. Hmm. It's too small. Okay, I'm good with that. Let's get this down and I think I'm going to be done on this one. Fill up your liner. This is Stacy Tape. Stacy Tape comes in, oh my gosh, I don't know how many size rolls we have. We start at an eighth of an inch and go all the way up to six inches. So an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch and a half an inch and three eighths of an inch and one inch and two inches and two and a half inches and five inches and six inches. And it is a little bit longer, a little bit stronger, and we try to keep our price a little bit more affordable than everybody else's. It's, gosh, 85 feet, I think is what it is. So you get 85 feet for of adhesive, and it's heat resistant. So you can, I am off again. Gosh darn it, but you know what? Just 
think long thing. There's no way I'm going to be able to pull this bad boy. No, I'm. There's no way I'm going to be able to pull this bad boy up. Well then, we're just going to make it what it is. What do you think? See, I love it. I love the texture you're able to achieve. And those crackles are fabulous. I love the texture you're able to achieve. And all of that detail in there, it's no longer flat. It's got a highs and lows and depth and perception and it's just, it's just beautiful. And, <laughs> and it's going and going and gone. So the crackle paste, we only have so much. Peggy uh, Stampendous said, here, do you like it? If you like it, let's do something with it. It turned out I loved it and it just makes such pretty things but where did we start let's go back shall we we started at the beginning where we literally die cut the horses and put them behind black paper to show you how they're done but then we took it a step up and we used that beautiful galaxy paper from hunky dory and we die cut the horses in and then we used ink just ink on white paper just ink to make some color and put it down and that galaxy paper is perfect but then we took that galaxy paper and we cut in our our motorcycle but we took inexpensive alcohol inks a buck 99 i don't even know if you can get sharpies for a buck 99 and we used the paper from sizzix their non-porous paper right here that has a coating on it a metal effect to it we just backed it with that paper and then went in with our pens our tour creations alcohol markers for a buck 99 and colored in what we wanted to color in and left the motorcycle silver but look at that galaxy paper wow that looks good and then we started to play with the crackle and using a heat tool to kind of speed things up but if you don't want to you don't have to use a heat tool you can just let it dry naturally and remembering that for a, uh, a chemically etched die like this it's very difficult to get it to cut all the way through my my die will cut through this white paper just fine but through all of this it's a little bit of a chore and you may be asking too much from a die that has no blades at all so instead we used it as the backgrounds You got this. All done with simply defined dies. <laughs> My simply defined the newest collection, which you'll only find here at Scrapbooking Made Simple and are value priced. Okay, what do we have for sale today? Well, I know we still have some of the Art Sherpa palette knives left so we'll keep those on sale we'll put those in the YouTube yummy I have got the mirror starry galaxy from hunky dory very limited by the time you finished watching this it could be gone if it is I'm so sorry I bought all I could I will go ahead and put the gold and the silver of the Sizzix Opulent on sale because it's absolutely beautiful and it just works so well with this whole collection. We will go ahead and we'll do both sets. We'll do the three colors from Eyes Inc. or the six colors from Hero Arts. These are a pigment-based metallic ink. 
up to you which one works best for you. This one gives you, the Hero Arts gives you six different shades of silver and uh, pewter in metallic and two different shades of gold and a shade of copper or you stick with just the gold, copper, silver from Aladdin. Really up to you what works best for you and what you have storage for and if you even need them, you might not even need them. Um, I used the tool from Woodware. So $5 for the dual and $5 for the refill. And I also used the crackle paste from Dreamweaver, which is a Stampendous company. Oh, and we'll do we'll do the mementos because we haven't done mementos on sale for a long time. I'll do the mementos on sale too. Just the dew drops. I think there's 35 colors. Just the dew drops mementos will be on sale. And then we won't put the we won't put the alcohol ink markers on sale because I really can't do any better than $1.99. But you're welcome to buy all 108 colors at $1.99. Last but not least is my dies. So let's bring these on over and see what I've got for you. Okay, so the cowboy boot I did today and the horses I did today. Elena has done. So here you have the horses and the hills. Here you have the cowboy boots. So we played with those today. I have no idea why there's a triangle in there. I think there must have been extra room in the die that I didn't realize and they just threw some random shapes in there to make my heart happy. I'm pretty sure. Then we have the cowboy hat. So stinking cute. And we have the scene, the build a scene. So here you have the cowboy hat with the words. Here you have the build a scene, all the different pieces. You get all of that for $13.99. These do, these do the different rivers that you can have running through them, the moon, the trees, the cute little animals. Shucks, for $13.99, the cute little animals make it worth it. And you get the words dream big. Okay. And then last but not least, we have the jalopy. So we have... Um, uh, heart, mind, and soul, and vintage life are the phrases that come with it. And we have the motorcycle that says, always take the scenic route. And here we have the old jalopy I did for you. And the motorcycle. Okay. See this, I think that there was just some little space and they threw something in there so I wouldn't say, why didn't we use that space? <laughs> okay, samples. So, I showed you the ones that we did here. So the jalopy and the boot and the horses and the motorcycle and I have I did this one earlier with the boot only in the blues and tans and browns all done with the texture paste and I finished this one off all matted And this one I did in more grays and more reds. So totally different look, same dye, totally different look. You decide. This one was hard to do. To do this one, 
I cut the die out of black paper first and then put my crackle paste over the die cut. Just so you know, to do this one, I cut the die, the boot out of black paper and then added my paste and then crackled and then uh, colored as opposed to this one. You can't die cut the crackle. It's just really hard. Okay, and then we have Elena. Look at her jalopy. And her motorcycle. Totally different looks than mine. She paper pieced. Here we have her horses. That looks so cool, Elena. And her cowboy hat. And her boots. So this is Elena. And then I have Miss Belinda. And Belinda put together, look at how cute she's got. A, look at how cute her scene is and the cow jumping over the, the is that, that's the sun, Belinda. <laughs> but she's got the rivers and she's got all the animals in the build a scene. So cute. And here she did the boots. So you've got the boots one way. And then you've got the negative here. <laughs> Very clever. So she took the innards from this, this paper here, this leopard paper, and used it over here. And here she's used embossing powder to do her different horses. How great that looks. And last but not least, her jalopy. This is Belinda. Was there a cat, Belinda? Huh. Not even on this one? Where's the cat? <laughs> I count on her stuff having a cat on it. Somewhere a black cat thrown in. All right, now we have Claire and Claire's boots. And Claire's motorcycle. They paper pieced, bless their pea picking heart. And Claire's horses. And here she has done embossed horses. And here she's done just a very small build a scene with the horse and the trees. And her jalopy. And last but not least, her howdy partner. Love the hat. Hat might be my favorite. I love the hat. Okay, and then we have Doris. I'm told that there's nothing on the inside. I'm hoping that that's true. <laughs> Here's Doris's hat. how simple it is. She just die cut and then paper pieced the, well, she paper pieced it back in. God bless you, pea picking heart, Doris. The silver back in. Looks like a postcard. Take the scenic route. Look at her. Look at her fabulous motorcycle. And then we have cowgirl up. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> and vintage life.
and a slimline heart, mind, and soul. That is Doris. Then Elena put together, I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Elena put together a little hanging and it has the build a scene in it. All of the build a scene with the water going up and the different mountains. And of course, it would not be Elena if we couldn't turn it on. Her and her fairy lights. Very cool. And it's just a little hanging. She's got it with the horse on top. Have no idea where she found some of this stuff. And then she covered the back with a textured paper. Well done, Elena. Love it. And as I said, we have several layouts. So our first one is, this is from Claire. This has to be Claire. And this is Claire's horse, Bella. And here's Claire's layout. So you've got the boots, you've got the horses, and just a real, who says the die kits can't be used as embellishments? We use them for embellishments all the time. All a sticker is is a die cut sticky. <laughs> That's all it is. Make your own. And then our next one is also, oh, I wonder if they're all from Claire. Claire did the old jalopy. So you've got the old jalopy here and vintage life. Really cute, Claire. And then last but not least, Elena. Elena did a horsey one. Look at, she's got the boots in the middle. She's got the horses below. Room for your pictures. And this is Elena's layout. So three different layouts for you this time. Holy smokes, artichokes. All right, you guys. It's me, Stacy. Hey. Hey, hold on, let me go on back. Back, 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 back. Okay, saying, thanks so much for being here today. YouTube number 220, I think it is. And thank you for all your love and your support and your understanding and your, your, you're just family is what you are. You're just family. And gosh, when family needs family, you're always there. And I always appreciate it. It never goes or it's never lost on me. Let me be clear. It's never lost on me, the support and the, the love that you share with us here. And this time you extended it to my family and, and they just really needed it. So God bless you for that. I hope you learned something today. I hope you took something away from you that made you go, oh, I think I want to do that. Or I can do that. Or I forgot that I can do that. Or I'm just going to try. I'm just going to try because you can. Everything I showed you today is doable by you. So get out that craft mat, get out those scissors and paper, even if that's all you've got is scissors and paper and some tape and some inexpensive markers and make something. You will find all this product at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. You might be able to get the mementos at your local retailer. You might be able to get the pigment inks at your local retailer. By all means, shop with them if you can. For the things you can't get locally at an independent mom and pop shop, then come online and we'd be we'd be lucky to have you as a customer all right you guys it's me i will see you next week stacy scrapbooking made simple scrapbookingmadesimple.com bye everybody